Glad you stopped by. You'll pardon me if I keep an eye on our vector? That's probably smart. Ah, uh, nothing like being on the bridge of your very own ship, is there? I could stand here and drink in that view all day. When I was test piloting the ship back home, I often did. Of course, it took a whole team to build the Tempest. I was the only one to come to Helios, though. Why did you? What can I say? We poured our hearts into a ship that wouldn't realize her potential until Andromeda. I could have stood on the shore and waved goodbye, or took the leap to see how it all turned out. I get it. Like leaving a good story half finished. The team liked that one of us was going. It felt right after all we went through. I remember Serena debugging line 2281 over and over, chewing that green pencil. Tion and O'Connell arguing equations tapping on the console, three drips of coffee on the corner. You remember all that? Hmm? Oh, yes. Solarians have photographic memories, and apparently mine's unusually sharp. Like my past is still happening. Though I suppose with the Solarian arc missing, you might not get many chances to compare. Did you hear anything about the arc back on the Nexus? Not a peep. Isn't that strange? You'd think there'd be something. Not that I dislike your company, but it's lonely without other Solarians. Don't sweat it. We'll bring the Solarians home. Of course we will. I just have to be patient, that's all. I should get back to it, but thank you. I was afraid the Tempest would be mothballed after we lost your father. We built her for this. She deserves to be in a Pathfinder's hands. Please, come by any time. Sam's been compiling our star charts. The other pilots on the Nexus will have plenty of new trails to follow. You can drop the charts off the next time we're there. Funny. A few months ago, that station was like a war zone. Flying was my only way to escape the chaos. Now it's become a haven, just as it was meant to be. Every good space station needs a big lake. Maybe some fountains? Indeed. Even non-amphibians need a little water. Regardless, the worst threat to the whole initiative is still that monstrosity. You mean the Scourge? I still see it crippling the Nexus in my memories. I had to train other pilots in hazardous flight techniques just to look for food and water. It's a cage that eats good ships and good people. Helios won't be home so long as it's a threat. The Angara live with it, and so can we. And if every one of our colonists was an ace pilot, I wouldn't be worried. If we could somehow neutralize it, or if our ships had defenses against it. Still, that's what we do, isn't it? Find a way where there is none. Just see the Nexus for proof of that. Hello, Gil. When are you cleaning up that repair on the sensor console? I'm not. It's a redesign. A redesign? Without a trained crew? I'm trained and it's working great. Don't be so uptight. Everything okay? Oh, fine. Fine. Don't worry about it. What can I do for you? I couldn't help overhearing you and Gil. It sounded pretty heated. He likes redesigning things, but the ship was built this way for a reason. I wish Gil would respect that. It's nothing to concern yourself about, really. If you helped to build the Tempest, you must know plenty about her. Just about everything. By memory, it was quite the effort to get her working. The initiative needed absolutely up-to-date technology, which we all had to coordinate, and some of it was rather tricky to acquire. Acquire? By. Legally and above board, of course. <clears throat> yes. Sadly, the other Pathfinder vessels were lost when the Scourge hit the Nexus. The Tempest is truly unique. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Well... I can't talk about Suvi. She's sitting right there. I'm not listening. You can say whatever you like. Oh no. I'm not falling for that again. You know, I haven't actually met many Solarians. Careful. Depending who you ask, we're conniving spies, genius researchers, or meddling scientists. We have to pack a lot of living into forty-odd years. Everything gets accelerated. Lines blur. I just hope we don't repeat our old mistakes out here. I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. Oh, the ship manual's useful. That leg of my workbench needed propping up. If you bothered reading it, you'd know that the Tempest is an orchestra of new tech. You can't just meddle with... I got this ship launch ready in record time, Callow. I know my stuff. And you don't have a shred of respect for other people's. Callow? Oh, Ryder. Sorry you had to hear that. Those parts you found welded in the storage room. I recognize them. From where? 
They belong to the ship's lead designer, Lucille Diawara. She broke her back during construction. But Lucille wouldn't abandon her ship. She converted a construction mech into a rig she could wear. She must have welded it into the hull. Her artist's signature. Not even a broken back could stop her dream. Sam, didn't you find an audio log with Lucille's rig? C can you play it? Sam found my construction gear then. Well done. One of you Pathfinders got the Tempest. Mason Barrow, Zevin Reka, Matriarch Ishara, Alec Ryder. You were the best of us. She's only saying that because she never met me. Take care of my ship and each other. Whatever is in Andromeda, you're the Milky Way to them. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. I never thought I'd hear Lucille's voice again. She really cared about the Pathfinders. Enough to give them her rig. For luck. Lucille made it a part of the Tempest. Let's keep it that way. I'll see to it, Ryder. Thanks. Now let's go make her proud. Callow, settle down. If this isn't a good reason to get excited. What's up? You guys aren't fighting, are you? Why would I fight with my best friend? Best friend? Oh, Callow. Callow's very excited about a report I received from EOS. It's good news. The radiation levels are steadily dropping. Your outpost Prodromos is really going to make it. When do you want to head back? Is there a rush? Just saying, if I created a thriving community in a brand new galaxy, I'd want to visit. Just wait till they put in the beach and the water slides. Now you're just playing with me. So, radiation levels are down. More to explore? Y yes but there's been a rise in cat activity as well. Figures that we're not the only ones to benefit from the planet's improvement. Might be nice to see how it's doing. Almost like a vacation. Almost. Maybe we'll head back at some point. Well, you're the boss. Just say the word. Gil, O'Connell and Serena spent months getting our systems coordinated. You can't just strip and redesign those connections on the fly. Gil? I know you can hear me. The whole ship can hear you. I'm just not listening. You're fighting again? I'm thinking the same, believe me. The hell you did? You can't just undo ten hours of work. I had to. Your revamp risks power imbalance between decks, something we solved back home. It's twice as efficient, just because it doesn't match your sainted specs. And now it does. As you say, deal with it. Callow. I know, just please don't let this distract you. I don't believe it. Gills reconfigured our entire nav array. O'Connell risked a dozen spacewalks putting that in place. Damn it. Callow, don't. Take the helm. I've had enough of this. You don't give a damn what my team and I went through to build this ship. No, I don't. I care about us surviving out here, and if that means redesigning... You don't have the right! All right, let's talk this out. What's going on? I'm doing my job, and he's undoing it because... Hell if I know! You weren't here. We had to get all kinds of new tech working in a single starship. Fifty hours shifts, epiphanies, accidents! Humans can forget. Salarians can't. To me, it's all still happening. My team is here. Stripping down the Tempest like some broken radio risks everything they suffered to build. Their legacy. If he had the Tempest up on blocks, I might see it. Look, Callow, your people did a great job, but they're dead. And they couldn't have anticipated half the problems in Helios. Like the Scourge. If we don't adapt, we'll die too. Is that what you want their legacy to be? Gutting a complex ship out in space isn't adapting. It's irresponsible and disrespectful. The Tempest is ours now. She has to serve our mission first in whatever capacity we need. 
Gil, change whatever you have to. I wonder, in time, will strangers be treating your achievements so carelessly? Peace and quiet, finally. Thanks, Ryder. Okay, show's over. Back to it. A foolish thing to get angry over, isn't it? I suppose the Tempest is just like any other ship, to be taken apart and put back together. Or she will be, once Gil's had his way. Gil's upgrading the Tempest, not scrapping her. She's in good hands. I wish I could believe you. But perhaps... <sighs> Anything else? I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. Ryder, might I borrow your research room access? What for? There's a small something I need to take care of. I might need your help, if you could. I'll help if I can. Suvi, could you take the helm for a little while? I mostly need your authorization to add to the database. Is that our drive core? The full blueprint. Only a few are in the system. I had them all by memory. So I drew them out. Every line. All the specs. Gil will be needing them. I won't. You're still not comfortable with Gil being in charge of your Tempest, are you? Call it more memories. Of the time that they were going to scrap the whole project. Some engineering consultant kept insisting the ship would never fly right. He used a lot of Gil's arguments. I think that's why this hurts. The others died thinking we won, that their legacy was safe, and... I failed them. You showed us the Tempest through your eyes, why she matters. Even Gil sees it now. We forget all our technology didn't just appear. Someone invented it. Someone cared. And in the end, someone new always takes up the banner and pushes forward. I am... Um, I need the tech officer's sign off on these schematics. Any thoughts on how to do this? A little honesty and humility will go a long way. Gil, may I get a moment of your time? I thought we settled this. What's going on? I saved the Tempest schematics for you. It'll be easier with them on hand. Seeing her drawn out down to the basics, she's kind of beautiful. Oh, right. You never saw. Yeah, look at the arc here. That's artistry. And there. A real victory. Our arc back at the Nexus. I'd almost given up hope. I find things, Callow. My job description's only one word. Losing Pathfinder Reka is a blow. So many Salarians joined the initiative because of her. But you did your best. Did you need me? I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. Ah, there you are. I was wondering, when you found the Salarian Ark, was anything strange, out of place? You mean, besides the Exalted Krogan, the relics, and getting jabbed in the neck? Why are you asking? Because a few hours ago, we received this. Hello, Ryder. I don't think the Solarian Ark was captured by chance. If you want to know more, meet me at these coordinates. That's all. Do you think it's some sort of hoax? Now that I think about it, a Ket Armada just stumbling across the Solarian Ark seems a little convenient. Coincidences do happen, though when you put it like that... I'll put the coordinates for this meeting in the nav computer. I suppose there's no harm in making sure. So that message was from an STG agent? One who's convinced your people were betrayed. That's bizarre. What could the Ket offer anyone that's worth an arc? Watch your step, Ryder. Back home when STG was involved, things got messy. I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. That's what the Salarian Ark was worth to our officers? Thousands of lives for maybe a future advantage against the Ket? You're a better person than I, Ryder. I'd have toasted Adin in our thruster exhaust. But at least the dead and their families have some justice. Need anything else? I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. Ryder, enjoying the fruits of your labor? You deserve it. Thanks, Callow. 
The Tempest is getting some much-needed service. I thought I'd leave them to it. But I wouldn't miss the big day. Meridian looks so different out of the cockpit. I think I understand better why you do what you do. Thinking of trading in your pilot's chair for some muddy boots? Not even slightly. I know what I'm good for. I don't pretend to understand everything, but Meridian must have opened a lot of doors. Not all of them safe. I want you to know that it'll be my privilege to keep flying you to them. It means a lot that you want to stick with us, Callow. Of course. And keeping my ship is a plus. I've learned a lot from you, Ryder. And Gil. Though, uh, please don't tell him that. Things will change now. But that's all right. Nothing's ever really lost.